Physics lecture number five, calculation of distance from acceleration. If we rearrange the formula for acceleration, we can solve for final velocity. So acceleration is final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. If we multiply both sides by time, acceleration times time gives me AT, and then the uh, T cancels, so you know, basically multiply both sides by time. And then that'll cause that to cancel, and we get AT equals VF minus VI. And then uh, what we do is um, we add VI to both sides. So if you add VI to both sides, you get this, AT plus VI. AT plus VI equals VF. You know, the VIs here will cancel. And then if you flip this around, you'll get VF equals VI plus AT. So this is a handy formula to use. Find the velocity of an object after four seconds if it accelerates at two meters per second squared from an initial velocity of five meters per second. So here's our new formula, VF equals VI plus AT. We're trying to find the uh, new velocity after our object is sped up. It's going at an initial speed of five, so VI is five. Uh, the rate at which it's speeding up is two meters per second squared. So meters per second squared is the unit of acceleration. So A is uh, two meters per second squared. And then we're speeding up over a four second time period. So that's the value of T right here. So we have five plus two times four. And for this one problem, I put in the units just to show you how things cancel. Uh, the seconds will cancel, and we're going to meters per second plus meters per second, so our final answers will be in meters per second. So 5 plus 2 times 4 is going to give me uh, 13. So that's our answer. So it's uh, going at that speed after speeding up at this rate over this time period. Now for the rest of this and other remaining lectures, I'll probably only include the units in the final answer because I tend to make mistakes if I try to include the units and cancel them out. Now, if we take the uh, formula that we just learned, VF equals VI plus AT, and substitute, into, substitute it into this formula, well, we can get a new formula for change in X. What we're going to do is, in place of VF, I'm going to put VI plus AT. So. Here's a formula we learned in a previous lecture. And then in place of VF, since VF equals um, VI plus AT, this goes in place of VF. And then we go. So VF is VI plus AT. And if we substitute this in place of VF, we're going to get VI plus AT plus VI. All right. And then if we consolidate the uh, VIs, we're going to get two VIs plus AT times T. And then what we'll do is it will distribute the T. So two VI times T, two VI times T. Then AT times T is going to give me AT squared. All right. And then what we'll do is this is all divided by two. So we'll divide each factor by two and write it as a separate factor. 2VIT divided by 2 is written here, plus AT squared divided by 2 is written here. And then what happens is the 2's cancel here, and left with VIT plus AT squared divided by 2, or we rewrite it and just write uh, distance is VIT plus 1 half AT squared. So this is the formula we're going to use for a problem or two. A car moves at an initial velocity of 12 meters per second. It accelerates at a rate of 3 meters per second squared for 6 seconds. Uh, what distance is it covered during its acceleration? So we're trying to find the uh, distance, change in x. And the initial velocity, it's 12. So we'll put a 12 here. Uh, how long does it accelerate? Well, it accelerates for 6 seconds. So t is 6 all right, plus 1 half a. At what rate is it speeding up? Acceleration units are meters per second squared, so it's accelerating at 3 meters per second squared. That's the value of A. So that's what we put here. And then how long is it accelerating? The time of acceleration? 6 seconds. So 6 goes right here, 6 squared. So this is the uh, setup of the problem.
if we grind out the numbers, 12 times 6 is 72, and then 1 half times 3 times 6 squared is 1 half times 3 times 36. And then if you work all this out, you'll end up with 126. And we want this to two significant figures, so we'll write this as 1.3 times 10 to the 2 meters. And we can also calculate the distance covered while a car is slowing down or decelerating. Deceleration is just acceleration in the opposite direction. And we need to put a negative sign in front of acceleration uh, if we have an object that is slowing down. So when we solve these problems and they give us the acceleration for an object that's slowing down, we put a negative sign in front. So here's an example. A truck moves at an initial velocity of 42 meters per second. It slows down at a rate of 3.6 meters per second squared for 7 seconds. What distance does it cover while it's decelerating? All right, so we're solving for distance, delta x, vi, the initial uh, velocity is 42, so we'll put that there. The time over which it's slowing down is 7 seconds, so t is 7. 1 half a, so what, what rate is it slowing down? The acceleration is going to be 3.6. But we don't just write 3.6, we write negative 3.6. If the object is slowing down, we have to make the acceleration negative. All right? And then the time squared, 7 seconds. All right, so if you work this out, 294, this 42 times 7 is 294, and then 1 half times negative uh, 3.6 times 7 squared is going to be negative 88.2. That gives us 205.8, and then to two significant figures, it's going to be 2.1 times 10 to the 2 meters. So anytime it says decelerating, and they give you the rate of deceleration, uh, be sure to put a negative sign in front of it. Uh, when you use this formula. Now, if the initial velocity is zero, the term VIT equals, uh, the term VIT is going to be equal to zero, and it's going to drop out of the equation. So here's the equation we learned. If VI equals zero, zero times T is zero, so this term drops out, just becomes zero, and you just write it as uh, distance equals one half AT squared when the initial velocity is zero. So we can use this simplified problem when uh, the initial velocity is zero. So it says a car starts from rest and accelerates at five meters per second for, uh, squared for nine seconds. And what distance has it covered? So it starts from rest. Implicitly, they're telling you that the initial velocity is zero. So in that circumstance, we can use this formula. So change in x equals one half, and then a, the acceleration is five meters per second squared and then it's accelerating over a 9 second period, so it's going to be 9 squared. So 1 half times 5 times 9 squared is going to give me 202.5. To two significant figures, 2.0 times 10 to the 2. Now the same abbreviated formula can be used to calculate the distance covered while a car decelerates to a stop. Now in this case, it's not necessary to put a negative sign in front of the acceleration. Now, I could show you the proof, but you can prove it yourself. All right, so let's try a problem where an object uh, comes to a stop. So soccer ball rolling down the field slows down at a rate of 0.6 meters per second squared for 3.8 seconds and comes to a stop. What distance did it roll while it was slowing down? All right, so if it's coming to a stop, we can use this formula. So delta x equals 1 half, and then a, the rate at which it's slowing down, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, and then it takes... 3.8 seconds for it to roll to a stop, so the time is 3.8. So notice that um, the value of a is positive. When you use this abbreviated formula, you can just use a positive value for the acceleration. All right, so anyway, if you work this out, that's the distance uh, that you get, or 4.3 meters. So what this answer means is that um, if it's slowing down at this rate for 3.8 seconds, it'll cover a distance of 4.3 meters. Now we could create a formula relating velocity, distance, and acceleration without using time. So we start by taking this formula, that's basically, you know, delta x equals vi plus vf. So these are the same two formulas. Instead of dividing it by two, we're multiplying it by one half. They're the same thing. So we're going to take this formula and solve it for time. And we're also going to take this formula and also 
rearrange it and solve for time or the letter T. <clears throat> okay, so here's the first formula. Uh, we multiply both sides by two. If we multiply both sides by two, we'll get two times delta X, and then two times one half will cause this to be equal to one, and you just end up with this. And then it looks like what I did here is I uh, reversed it. I just flipped it around. So VF plus VI times T equals two times delta X. So I just flipped this around. And then to solve for T, I would divide both sides by VF plus VI. So I just went VF plus VI there and VF plus VI there. If you do that, that cancels and it leaves us with T. All right, so here's an expression for T derived from this formula. We do it all over again for this formula. It looks like what I did here is I flipped this around. So instead of VF equals VI plus AT, I wrote VI plus AT equals VF. Flipped it around. And then I subtracted VI from both sides. So um, minus VI and then minus VI, that'll cause these to cancel out. We get AT equals uh, VF minus VI, and then divide both sides by A, and you get VF minus VI equals A. So, two different expressions uh, equal to time. So pay attention to these two. So we have two expressions for time. And since both expressions equal time, you set the expressions equal to each other and cross multiply. So here are the two expressions for time. And then since both of these expressions equal t, we can set these equal to each other. So this expression is equal to this expression because both expressions are equal to time. So we're going to take this and then we're going to cross multiply. Okay. So vf plus vi times VF minus VI, VF plus VI times VF minus VI is going to be equal to 2 times delta X times A. 2 times delta X times A, and I just put the A in front. All right, so VF plus VI times VF minus VI is going to be VF squared minus VI squared. Remember from algebra that if you do uh, X plus Y times X minus Y, that's going to be equal to X squared minus Y squared. All right, that's something you should know. In any case, if I move VI squared to the other side, add VI squared to both sides, you're going to get VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AX. So we're going to use this formula to solve some problems. A car traveling at 32 meters per second accelerates at 8 meters per second squared over a distance of 13 meters. What's its final velocity? All right, so we're going to find the final velocity. And the initial velocity is 32 meters per second. Remember, meters per second is the uh, unit of velocity. Plus 2 times A, the acceleration. Well, meters per second squared is acceleration, so that's 8 in place of A. And then over a distance of 13 meters. So distance delta x is going to be 13. So here's our problem. So if you grind this out, you're going to end up with VF squared equals 1,232. If you take the square root of both sides, you'll get 35.09 or 35 meters per second. <clears throat> if the object slows down, then the acceleration should be a negative number. A car traveling at an initial velocity of 64 meters per second slows down at a rate of 8.6 meters per second over a distance of 12 meters. What is the final velocity of the car? All right, so here's our formula. Um, final velocity is what we're going to find. Initial velocity is 64. 2 times a, the rate at which it's slowing down, is 8.6 meters per second squared. And since it's slowing down, we write the acceleration as negative 8.6 and it slows down over a distance of 12 meters. That's delta x right there, okay? So 64 squared is this. Two times negative 8.6 times 12 is that. If you add these two together, you get 3889.6. If you take the square root, you get 62.36 or 62 meters per second, all right? So when using this formula, if the object slows down, then you have to use a negative value for acceleration. Now, if the initial velocity is zero, the term VI drops out of the formula, and we get 
vf squared equals 2a times delta x. And we use this when the initial velocity is zero. And we can also use a similar abbreviated equation if the final velocity is zero. So vi squared equals 2a times delta x. And we use this when vf equals zero. And I'll let you figure out the proof for how this formula comes about. But you can trust me, this formula works when initial velocity or final velocity is zero. Now this above formula is used when an object slows to a stop. So even though the object is decelerating, uh, it's not necessary for acceleration to be a negative number. And in the proof, the negative signs disappear. So you notice that for these abbreviated uh, formulas I've given you, the acceleration can be positive. So let's try a problem. Our torpedo decelerates at a rate of 15 meters per second squared and comes to a halt after traveling 120 meters. What was the initial velocity before deceleration? All right, so we're trying to find the initial velocity, two times acceleration, so 15 meters per second squared, change in the distance, so it travels a distance of 120 meters before stopping, two times 15 times 120 is 3600, take the square root, we get 60 or six times 10 to the one. So you use this formula uh, when it comes to a halt. If this comes to a halt, it means final velocity is zero. So here's a summary of the uh, formulas we use. So VF equals VI plus AT, delta X equals VIT plus one half AT squared. And for this, if something's slowing down, you have to make sure that the negative sign, that acceleration is negative. But if you're coming to a halt or Starting from rest, you can use this abbreviated formula and you can use a positive value for acceleration. The other formula we learned was VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AX. And for this formula, if an object slows down, the acceleration has to be expressed as a negative number. But for these abbreviated formulas, um, the acceleration uh, can be positive. So we use this formula, VF equals 2a delta x when the initial velocity is zero. We use this when the final velocity is zero. And in both cases, the acceleration uh, can be written as a positive number. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been physics lecture number five, calculation of distance from acceleration.